Well, amen. Well, friends, we just passed Purim, but who here knows we are in the overflow season of Purim. We are currently in the overflow of Purim. And what is Purim? Of course, I released a whole uh, webinar, Zoom teaching on this. But Purim uh, is a season where God begins to cast lots. And God begins to cast lots. And he begins to select and elect certain people to promote and to raise up. So this truly is a season of promotion. And it truly is a season of elevation. But even in midst of promotion and elevation, I want to talk to you about the spirit of ascension. Because truly right now, we're in a season where God is about to bring low the proud and raise up the humble. And I don't know about you, but I want to be humble. I And you know what? I've been getting humbled. How have I been getting humbled? By by building. I'm literally building with these hands, okay? I'm a city boy millennial, right? But this city boy millennial has been building things and putting things together, desks and tables and and chairs uh, in the studio and working and cleaning and working hard. And my goodness, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God uh, than sit and dwell with sinners. But uh, this truly is a season where God is demoting and bringing low the proud. And he is raising up and increasing the humble. So I want to talk to you. Okay, I want to prophesy over you because your promotion will be unstoppable. Okay, I want you to repeat that after me say, my promotion will be unstoppable. The promotion, the elevation, the ascension, the expansion and increase on your life will be unstoppable. I don't care what witch, what devil, what Jezebel, I don't care what uh, economic recession, economic depression. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're going through or what size of Goliath is facing you, taunting you and tormenting you, every mountain will be moved in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. So I want to talk to you right now because this is a season where God is promoting. But let's go over to uh, the word of God because I have a word to share with you. And today I want to talk about the spirit of ascension. Amen. The spirit of ascension. Now let's go over to Psalm 24. Amen. Psalm 24. And if you're with me today, say amen. And if you're Excited to receive the word of the Lord. I want to say hallelujah. Psalm 24, amen. Verses one to four, praise God. Psalm 24, verses one to four. And here the Bible says, glory to God. And here the Bible says, uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all of those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Keep going, verse three. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Someone say, ascend to stand. Someone say, I rise to stand. I want to repeat to say, I will increase so that I can expand, okay? You ascend the hill of God to stand before him in his holy place. All right, who shall stand in his holy place? Verse four, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. Someone say clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. Now, if you're with me today, I want to say amen. And all of God's people said amen. Now, here is the prerequisite. This is a very familiar, famous passage. And we understand that in this passage, uh, the psalmist, is kind of asking a rhetorical question. The psalmist is asking a rhetorical question. All of the blessings of God, the vastness of God's creation, the vastness of God's power, of his glory, the fullness, some say fullness, okay? Because remember, God does not just want you to have one portion. He wants you to have the fullness. He does not want you to have shallow levels. He wants you to be in the overflow. He wants you to have the fullness. Now, it's not enough for you to have one gift, you have all gifts in Christ Jesus. It's not enough for you to, uh, you know, experience one miracle. No, I want to experience the boundless, limitless, experiential ability of all of his miracles, of everything. Someone say amen. It's all yours. Someone say it's all mine. So the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he is founded upon the waters. So who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Someone say ascend. Now, all throughout Hebraic Christian Torah, all throughout the Bible, uh, there's this concept of ascending or going up, all right? I want you to say, I'm ascending. There's this whole concept of ascending. And 
the whole Hebraic context of the Bible of the Torah is about going up. In fact, even if you read in the Psalms, in the book of Psalms, it talks about the ascension steps, okay? With every step, as they were going up to the temple, I want to say step, with every step, they were going up to the temple, they read out loud a certain psalm. That's why it's called an ascension psalm, okay? Because with every step, they're going higher and higher. Now, I want you to catch this. As you're going higher and higher with every step, there must be a sacrifice. There must be a price that's paid. With every step that's going higher and higher, why? Because you're increasing in, in elevation and it becomes more difficult for you to breathe. It becomes more difficult for you to climb. All right, the force of gravity begins to push you harder and harder and harder. I wanna talk to you right now. Some of you are feeling pressure right now because you are going up. You are feeling the pressure of gravity, the weight of gravity, the weight of the world. You're feeling pressure and the weight because you're actually ascending the hill of the Lord. If you're, if you're with me today, say amen. Now, this word called ascend, this word called ascend in the Hebrew, it is Allah. I want to say Allah, A-L-A-H, A-L-A-H. That word is Allah. And ascend, what Allah means, it means to go up. It means to climb, okay? I want to say I'm climbing. It means to go up. It means to ascend, and it means to climb. Now, let's stop right here because as you are, Climbing up, going up, as you are being mounted up upon wings like eagles, there's always going to be forces or tests that will try to test you or forces that will try to stop you. There's always going to be pressure from your peers, pressure from the world, uh, pressure with finances, pressure to perform. There's always going to be certain pressures or tests, opposition, enemy spirits that are going to try to stop you. Now, if you're with me today, I want to say amen. So why am I sharing this? Because as you ascend and climb, the Lord wants to strengthen you. God wants to strengthen you and he wants you to know, hear me now. He wants you to know that he wants you to ascend. He wants you to meet him up on the holy place. He wants you to go up and to meet him where he is. Now, I want to talk to you because with every level, there is a new view. With every level, there is new vision. With every level, there is new revelation. Of course, as you ride an airplane, as you fly in an airplane, as you're going somewhere from point A to B, all right, as you go up, what you see down below looks smaller and smaller and smaller. God is saying, I want to bring you up so that you can have greater vision. I want to bring you up higher so you could see things from a heavenly perspective. The Bible says that you and I were seated in heavenly places. If you're with me today, say amen. Because God wants you to ascend. But you see, with every step of ascension, there must be sacrifice. There must be worship. There must be an offering unto the Lord. With every step of ascension, every level, every realm that you go up in order for your view, your vision, your revelation to shift, you need to pay a price. If you're with me today, someone say amen. And by the way, I love seeing those angry faces. Keep it coming. I'm sharing this because as you go up, you will have to pay a price. So that word ascend in Hebrew is Allah, which means to go up, ascend, and climb. Now, let's break it down. This is the same word in Genesis 8, 20. Come on, somebody. This is the same word, Allah or ascend. It is the same word in Genesis 8, 20. All right, and let me read this verse. Then Noah built an altar, come on, to the Lord. And he took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. I'm gonna read that again. Genesis 8.20, hallelujah. This is the same word as we read Allah, which means ascend, climb, or go up. Then Noah built an altar 
to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Now let's go back. Allah means to ascend, go up, or to climb. This word is the same word that's used in Genesis 8.20. My goodness, that word offered or burnt offerings, that word offered or burnt offerings is Allah. Someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. Can I go deeper here? When you offer your burnt offerings, burnt sacrifices, when you offer your burnt offerings and your burnt sacrifices, that causes you to go up. Oh, I'm preaching now. If you ever want to go up to a higher level, you must give an offering to the Lord. If you ever want to go up, Allah, you must begin to give a burnt offering that is costly. Genesis 8.20. This is after, someone say after, after Noah came out of the flood of the ark. This is after, say after, this is after they were in the ark with the flood of the whole earth and the door opened and finally they were able to settle on dry ground, on dry land. And after that, what did Noah do? Come on, somebody. After that, what did Noah do? He built an altar and he made a sacrifice to the Lord. Now catch this, verse 21. Then the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. Jesus, hear me now. Whenever you go up, whenever you, Allah, climb ascent, whenever you offer an offering, a burnt offering, whenever you give to the Lord an offering, it's a pleasing aroma. That pleasing aroma, that fragrance, that scent, hear me, causes you to come up. Can I go a little bit deeper? Esther prepared herself for 12 months. She prepared herself for 12 months in, in fragrances, in hyssops, myrrhs, oils. She got pampered. She was hanging out in a Holy Ghost spa. She was getting beautified, manis and petties and getting her hair done. And she was getting beautified and queenified. She was getting beautified, consecrated for 12 months. Come on, somebody. And when the king saw her, her fragrance, come on, it's not just a natural fragrance. It is a spiritual fragrance. Because who here knows that you can smell things in the spirit? Come on, somebody. Who here knows that you can smell death? You can smell sin. You can smell cancer. You can smell things in the supernatural realm. Are you following me? So here, Esther bathed, buttered, battered. She went all in for 12 months and the spiritual fragrance of her spirit, of her soul, which was so transformed, that aroma pleased the king. And he said, come on up. Now you're being promoted. My goodness. If you have a shoe, you better throw it at somebody. Because the king discerned, experienced, smelled that pleasing aroma from the inside of the heart of Esther. He said, now I'm going to cause you to become my queen, my boo thing, my she thing. And she became promoted and elevated into the realm of Queen, some would say hallelujah. The king elevated her, raised her up, promoted her, and she received the seat of queen. If you're with me today, say amen. Give me some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall. Because your spiritual fragrance causes you to go up or down. Let me talk to you. Your fragrance causes you to go up or down. And whenever you go up, there is a fragrance of the glory of God. Whenever you ascend, whenever you become promoted, whenever you become elevated and raised up, lifted up by God, whenever you receive a promotion from the Lord, there comes, come on somebody, there comes a pleasing aroma that begins to fill the room. What happened with Mary? My goodness, Mary <clears throat> broke the alabaster box at the feet of Jesus. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says that aroma filled the whole room. Come on, somebody. 
Your presence is about to fill the whole room. The influence on your life, the mantle on your life, the grace on your life is about to fill the whole room. That's called domination. That's called taking dominion in an atmosphere. Your presence is going to be known. Your presence is going to be felt, heard, experienced. Your presence, your authority is going to be absolutely obvious. It's not even an alpha uh, mentality. It's not even an alpha male or alpha dog type of mentality. But your fragrance is going to be known. My goodness. There's little things dripping from the roof. Come on, somebody. <laughs> the Lord says, get ready for in this season... Your presence is going to fill the whole room. And hear me now. Some of you need some bigger rooms to fill. Some of you need some bigger rooms, auditoriums, stadiums to fill. If you're with me today, say amen. So let's go back to the story of Mary. Mary broke the alabaster jar box and honored the Lord in worship. The Bible says it was one year's worth of wages. Now, commonly in the United States, that could be 50 or 60,000. U.S. dollars, an annual wage. All right. Commonly, right? Some, maybe it's 35. Some, maybe it's 40. All right. Some, it might be 1 million. But I'm sharing this because Jesus said this story, this act will be told all around the world. And everybody will know about her promotion, about her fragrance. Everybody will know about her Allah, her ascension, about her elevation in the spirit. Now, what happened? People were offended. Judas and the disciples, the Bible says they were offended. Come on, somebody. Who here knows that your ascension will offend some people? Who here knows that your elevation will offend the religious? Who here knows that your fragrance will cause demons to manifest? Can I get an amen? Your presence will cause demonic spirits to begin to manifest and be agitated because they cannot handle the scent of the glory of God. Did you know his presence has a fragrance? Did you know that his glory has a scent? The Garden of Eden, heaven has smells. There's so much for you to smell and so much for you to see and experience and discern. If you're with me today, someone say amen. Now let's go back to this because Genesis 8.20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, say altar, and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Verse 21, and when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said, his heart, I will never again curse the ground. Wow. Your offering can reverse the curse. Your offering that pleases the heart of God can reverse the curse. If you're with me today, I need you to shout and clap your hands. Because Noah's offering so pleased God, hallelujah, that he said he will never again curse the ground. Come on, somebody. Your fragrance reverses curses. Your presence is a, is a prophetic act of intercession that reverses curses in the regions and in the land. Your, your atmosphere, your aroma will reverse every demonic, evil, foul, defiled thing that is trying to destroy you. Someone say amen. Come on, can I go deeper? If you're with me today, say deeper. Now that is the same word, offer and offering is the same word, come on somebody, as Allah which means to ascend. Your fragrance causes you to ascend or to descend. Your offering causes you to go up or to go down. Let's go back here. Psalm 24, verse three. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Hallelujah. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Praise God. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. Now, this is a prerequisite. If you want to ascend, if you want to <clears throat> go up, if you want to increase and please the Lord with the offering of your life, with who you are, if you want to go up higher, 
then you must have clean hands and a pure heart. I don't know why it's doing that, but hopefully, I don't know why it does that. These black question marks. Shatarababa. Who shall ascend? What is the prerequisite? What is the standard? What is the requirement for you to ascend to Allah, to go up, to be that place in Roma, to, to, to go up and to stand? What is the mandatory, obligatory standard? Number one, clean hands. Number two, a pure heart. Number three, does not lift up his soul to what is false, which means you fear God. You hate what is sin, you hate what is evil, and you love what is good, and you love what is righteous. And then number four, you do not swear deceitfully. What does that mean? That means your lips are clean, your mouth is clean, the things that you say are righteous. Amen. So let's go back to this. He has clean hands. Someone say hands. Someone say heart. Someone say soul. And someone say lips. Hands, heart, soul, lips. Hands, heart, soul, lips. If you want to ascend the hill of the Lord, you must have clean hands, pure heart, clean soul, and pure lips. <clears throat> now, some of you might say, Pastor Ben, that's a lot. That sounds a lot like works. Do I need to work at this? Do I need to, you know, is it by my performance? Well, absolutely not. But it is by his grace through faith that enables us to be transformed and regenerated. Hear me now. Hear me now. And that's why many people who may be promoted in positions, their gift got them there, or the gifting or the anointing of their life got them there, but their character is not mature or holy enough to keep them there. Can I say that again? You may be beautiful, Physically, but is your heart mature and strong enough in love? You may be gifted with your mouth, with the words that you say. Obviously, I have a gift of communication. I have a gift of gad. And, and communications uh, was one of the things I studied in my leadership uh, course. But you may be good with communication. All right. You may know how to persuade people. But will your heart and your character keep you? In that place. And that's why the Bible says, who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Somebody say hallelujah. Who can stand in his holy place? Because it's not just about ascending. It's not just about going up. Because remember, what goes up can come down. And the faster you go up, the faster you can be brought down. I remember a pastor said this a number of years ago to me. He said, the greater the call, the greater the fall. So the higher you go up, the higher your fall may be. Do you have holiness, righteousness, truth, purity that's so deep ingrained in your life that you're able to stand there and have true dominion? What happened in the days of Joshua? Yes, they crossed over to the promised land. Come on, somebody. Joshua and the Israelites, they went into the promised land. But guess what? Number of years later, they began to get reoccupied by the enemies, by the giants, by the Philistines in the land. Listen, I don't just want to be on top for a season. That's where I want to live. That's where I want to be. I don't want promotion if it's just for a season. Like Esther, she had promotion, but she used it for good and ensured that she would remain there in the rightful place and it would impact the world and it would do more good than what, than just her enjoying the blessings and the benefits of being in the palace. If you're with me today, say amen. So once again, we're talking about ascension in the spirit. Hallelujah. Because I believe this is a season of ascension. But we are also in a season where God is demoting where God is bringing down and the attitude of your heart, the things that you say, the attitude of your soul, that can get in the way, that can be a blocker to your blessing. 
So I'm going to say, Jesus, remove every blockage to my blessed destiny. Those things in your heart, if they're not dealt with, it can block your future. So let's, let's go into this, these four things, right? Clean hands and a pure heart. All right, clean hands. What does that mean? Clean hands. Are your hands defiled? Okay, that stands for bribery. Okay, that stands for doing something that's wrong to get something that's temporary. That's sin. Doing something that's wrong, faulty, and evil to temporarily please you for a moment. So clean hands and a pure heart. What does pure heart mean? Pure heart means pure motives. Are your motives clean? Are your motives selfless? Or are you selfish? And do you have secret motives for your own personal gain? You know what that is? That is an orphan spirit. When you have secret motives in your heart, that will begin to pollute and collude every single thing that you do. Now, everybody is a target uh, for your blessing. And hear me now, even in, in ministry, people of God, even in ministry, especially in ministry, our hearts must have pure motives. We don't do it for money. We don't do it for connections. We don't do it to for influence, to be liked by people, to be loved by people. We don't do this out of competition for another brother or sister. No, you must have pure motives. Does not lift up his soul to what is false. My goodness. So what does this mean? Are you entertaining lies? Are you entertaining gossip and slander? Are you idolizing and believing in lies and deceit? Too many people would rather be deceived than be set free. Let me say that again. People would rather have their demons than be set free with Jesus. Do you know why? Because they become comfortable with their demons. They become best friends with those demons. So they'd rather be comfortable with their demons. They'd rather believe in a lie with deception than be set free. It's like this whole thing with the vaccine, the whole thing with COVID. And now Tucker Carlson is exposing the video, the true video footage from Jan 6. People would rather believe in a lie then humble themselves and be set free by the spirit of truth. Number four, does not swear deceitfully. What does that mean? Are you speaking bad about a man and woman of God? Are you gossiping? Are you slandering? Are you defaming the name of a servant? The Bible says do not judge another man's servant. Who are you? Are you, are you constantly cynical and critical and Jezebelically speaking evil and negative about people? Are you always a critical cynic? Are you always grumpy? Come on, somebody. Are you grumpy, stumpy, dumpy? God wants to deliver you. Amen. Who does not swear deceitfully? If you're following me today, say amen. Now, these can be blockers to your ascension. And I don't know about you, but I want to ascend in the glory of God. I want to ascend. I want to be free. I want to go up. I want to climb up in the glory of God. And friends, help us to break the 100 mark today. Amen. Thank you very much. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this. Tag somebody and help us to break the 100 mark today. <clears throat> but going up is not about a physical location. Hear me now. It is about a spiritual revelation. Going up, ascending is not about a physical location. It is about a spiritual revelation. Who here knows? There are many in positions of power, authority, and influence today that do not have the right spirit. They may be up in a place of physical elevation, but they do not carry the power of the spiritual revelation. True ascension is in the spirit. True ascension is in your revelation. I hope you're catching this. True ascension is in your revelation. 
and the more revelation. The Bible says, rebuke a foolish person and they will scoff you and hate you even more. But if you correct a man of wisdom, then he will love you even more. Do you see that? God wants to remove every blockage to your ascension. Somebody say, I am coming up higher. Now, follow me, friends, because, because we're in a new season and because the Lord wants to raise you up, there are certain tests that you must pass. There are certain situations that you must turn the other cheek instead of being offended, instead of defending yourself, lashing out, instead of, you know, uh, speaking out. There are certain tests that God is wanting to mature and process your heart and your soul so that you can be in that place. He's raising you up to stand in the holy place. Someone say, I am ascending. Somebody say, I am ascending. Now, let me, let me share a little bit more and then I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna give you some thoughts, some extra thoughts here. The Bible says Jesus ascended to the highest place. Therefore, he descended. Because he descended to the lowest place, he ascended to the highest place, okay? Some of you have gone so low that you're about to go so high. Some of you are in the, you are in the lowest place ever of your life, financially, physically, emotionally, mentally. Some of you may be in the lowest place ever. But the lower you go, the higher he will raise you. Now, I believe in this season, there is going to be a demotion of many Hamans. There's going to be a demotion, a bringing down low. There is going to be a removal. Come on, somebody. Months ago, I prophesied about sudden removals. Amen. But there is going to be removals of certain people and places of influence. If you're with me today, say amen. There's also going to be an unstoppable elevation and ascension that's coming over you and over the body of Christ. Hear me now. The Egyptians hated the Jews. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, they made their labor even more difficult and harder. They added more burdens, added more weights of responsibility, and they were being more evil, come on, more malicious, and the Egyptians were becoming even more tyrannical to the Jewish people. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says, come on, that the more they harassed them, the more God blessed them. I wanted to say this, the more the Egyptians harassed the Jews, the more God blessed the Jews supernaturally. Do you know why? Because their blessing comes from Yah, Jehovah, Yahweh, not from the systems of man. Can I go a little deeper here? God will cause you to be in the system, but you, come on, but you do not need to work in the ways of the system. Because the favor and the glory of God that's on your life will break the system, will override the system. It will usurp the system because that's what working in heaven's economy looks like. You and I, we live and move and work from the economy of heaven, from the realm of the kingdom, not from the realm of earth, not from the Egyptian systems, not from the Babylonian ways. We move and we operate from the supernatural realms of God's kingdom. If you're with me today, say amen. Give me some hearts and likes. The more the Egyptians oppressed and harassed the Jews, the more God ascended them and raised them up. Somebody say, he is raising me up. I want to prophesy over you. You are about to ascend over your enemies. You are about to ascend in your finances, in your spirituality, in your relationship with God. You are about to ascend in your region, in your community. You are about to climb up 
Go up, go over. You are about to Allah. Come on. You're about to come up higher than what they could have ever imagined. Do you know why? Not because you're striving for it. Not because you're, 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 you're stressing over about it. No, because his mighty hand will lift up the humble. The Bible says his mighty hand will raise up the humble. If you're with me today, say amen. As I bring this to a close here, friends, the spirit of ascension, like I said earlier in the beginning, whenever you ascend, whenever you go up one step, hallelujah, whenever you go up one step, there must be a sacrifice. There must be a pleasing aroma that comes up. There must be an offering that is given to the Lord. With every step, there is a price to pay. <clears throat> clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Is your heart in the right place? Is the attitude of your soul in the right place? Or are you offended? Are you mad? Are you angry? Are you bitter? Are you mad at God? Have you lost your hope in the Lord? Shitaralanamata. Oh, <laughs> have you lost your faith in the Lord? Shoo. Are you mad that someone else got promoted? That someone else is elevated? Are you? Come on, someone. You could do better than that. You could celebrate and give thanks even when someone else gets promoted. Even when someone else, come on, somebody, because your time is now and your time is coming. And the Lord knows how to get to you what you need in his right time. He is never too slow in keeping his promises. For every promise is yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Is your ascension by revelation is a blocked? Is there a blockage? Is there a spirit of delay? Because these things can delay. And hear me now, friends. Hear me now. Okay. You can be promoted by man or on the external, outside, natural world. But if your heart is off and wrong in the spirit with God, then the Lord can and he will remove you. Remember, when God opens a door, no man can shut it. But when man opens a door, men and women can shut it. I don't want doors opened that people open for me. No, I want God to open up doors. And you know, what? When, whenever God does it, it's pure, it's holy. There's no mixture. There's no mixed motives. No manipulation. No, you owe me because I gave you. No, the Bible says, owe no man nothing but the continuing depth of love. It's not you scratch my back, I scratch yours. No, it's pure, it's holy, it's one and done, it's finished. I do it unto the Lord. Somebody say, I'm ascending. You are ascending by revelation. Pure heart and clean hands. You are ascending with good motives, with the spirit of truth. You're being promoted by the hand, by the grace of God. And many will not like your ascension. Many will be jealous. They'll be angry. They'll be offended. They'll say, you don't deserve it. You're right. I don't deserve it. But you don't know the God that I serve. You don't know the years that I've cried behind the scenes. The offerings, the sacrifices I've made, I've given. You don't know my story. Praise God. The ascension gifts of God are coming upon us. The ascension gifts. Hallelujah. You are ascending. In the name of Jesus, you're climbing up, you're going up. And hear me now, Jacob's ladder, last on, and I'm going to pray for you. If you're with me today, say amen. 
Give us some hearts and likes, share this on your wall, praise God. Jacob's ladder, when Yaakov fell asleep, he had a dream and he began to wrestle with an angel. And he won the wrestling match. He won the mucha lucha. He was the conquistadora. He won the mucha lucha. And with the wrestling match with Jacob and the angel of the Lord, from the wrestling, he began to rule and reign. But from there, he had a vision and a dream of Jacob's ladder. And we call it Jacob's ladder. What is Jacob's ladder? It's an open heavens. What is Jacob's ladder? Hear me now. Jacob's ladder is, imagine a ladder, right? But it's really the stairway to heaven. And what is a stairway to heaven? All right. Are you ready to handle this? What is a stairway to heaven? The stairway to heaven is the rib cage of Jesus. It is the rib of Yeshua. Hear me now. The stairway to heaven is the side of the Lord Jesus Christ. From the side, a rib was taken. The side of Adam, a rib was taken. And that became his wife, Eve. So Jacob's ladder is the rib cage or the side of Jesus. It is the, it's the structure of the Lord. And you go up Jacob's ladder or you go up the inside of the Lord Jesus, the heart of God, the cross of Jesus. You go up and as you ascend, and in fact, the Jews say that Jacob's ladder looked like a DNA strand, all right? American ladders or these ladders, you know, they just go up, right? Up and down, up and down, up and down. But the Hebraic understanding of Jacob's ladder is it was, a, it's a hexagon. It looks like a DNA strand. Someone say amen. Looks like a DNA strand. What does that mean? That means there's constantly an intermingling, an intertwining, a strand that's being tied together as you go up. That means that you are being tied together in the Lord, in the Holy Spirit, as you ascend, as you go up Jacob's ladder. If you're with me today, say amen. My goodness. As you are going up, you are being intertwined in the circle of life, in the dance of the spirit, in the tying and the nodding and the covenant of the Lord as you're going up. But hear me now. As you go up, it's like a funnel. It increases in speed increases in momentum and it increases and becomes an unstoppable momentum and force. All right, if you're with me today, say amen. Why am I sharing this? Because Jacob fell asleep and he had a dream with God. Hear me now. Your ascension comes when you rest. Jacob did not necessarily have a physical sleep but he had spiritual rest in his soul. And only when he was able to rest in the Lord, only when Adam was able to rest in the Lord, then the dream realm or Jacob's ladder or ascension, Allah, Aliyah, came forward. You will ascend as you rest in him. You will go up as you rest in Jesus. You will go up because it's him raising you up. Not by my, not by strength, but by my spirit, says God. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Shut up, Baba. Someone say, I am going up. Someone say, I am ascending the ladder of the Lord. Wow. So much was shared and released today. If you're with me today, say amen. Are there any blockages to your ascension? He has clean hands and a pure heart. Soul does not lift up to what is deceitful and does not swear deceitfully. Your hands, 
your heart, your soul, your lips. The Lord is removing every blockage and every delay so that you will go up in the mighty name of Jesus. And not only will you ascend, but you will stand in his holy place. If you're with me today, say amen. Somebody say, I will ascend to stand. Amen. You are about to stand before the Lord in the throne room of God, in the courts of heaven. You are about to stand before the king and declare the word of the Lord to all the nations. Friends, I want to pray for you. If this word bears witness with you, say amen. Give me some hearts and likes. I want to pray for you here. Rebe say, well, that was a poor that was a poor, I feel it now. And we were not able to break 100 today for whatever reason. But it's all goody because this word and the impartation on this word will go to where it needs to. And those who need to hear it will not only hear it, but they will fully receive it. Amen. Bless you, Dr. Tadius. Annie Mae Wilson, Claudia Hayden, haha, <laughs> Rabba Sete, Prophet Ivana, Apostle Robert Barbeau, Justin, yes, Lord. Kelly Bailey, good to see you. Michelle Vargo Hutchison. Glory, Sharamanda Rede Sita, Crystal Solomon, Yolanda, thank you, Lord. Sharabasa Tarabrata. Amber Flores, Becky Weaver, Masata. Well, lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you. <laughs> Shoo. Matatata. Shabababa. Rebesitarabata. Lord, I thank you that their life is a pleasing aroma to you. And that irresistible fragrance will lift you up and raise you up. That irresistible fragrance of purity of life, love, will cause you to be raised up. Jesus. Remember, the greater the pressing, the greater the fragrance. How are you going to have oil? For a perfume or a fragrance, it must be pressed. In order for a burnt offering to be pleasing, it must be burnt. Ha ha. Jaba baba. So, Lord, I thank you. Clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. And give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. And God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. And God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your Face, O oh God of Jacob, give us clean hands, O, oh, and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another, and give us clean hands, and give us pure hearts. Hallelujah. Let us not lift our souls to another. And God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O oh God of Jacob. And God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, O oh God of Jacob. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut 
Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. E era babacê, era babacê. E era maçandere, sere. For the Lord says, your presence is irresistible. He says, who is this leaning on her beloved? Coming up, wow. Coming up out of huh, the wilderness. My goodness, I love whenever the Lord does this. Who is it that comes up? Say up, say Allah. I'm going up, I'm ascending, I'm climbing up. Who is this that Aliyah that goes up from the wilderness? Leaning upon her beloved. Psalm Solomon 8, 5. Glory to God. Are you ready for the world to say, who's that coming up from the wilderness? Coming up from the grave. I thought I killed you. I thought I buried you. I thought I destroyed you and your business and your ministry. I thought I... But who is that coming from the ashes, rising from the wilderness? Who is that coming up from the wilderness? And you know what? She's not alone. She's leaning on her beloved. You are leaning on the Lord. You are leaning on the strength, on the might of Jesus because you are yoked to the oxen. The Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, you who are weary, you who are tired, come and learn from me and I will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You are yoked with the apostolic ox of Jesus. You are yoked you are tied, you are bound, come on somebody, with the ox anointing. Hallelujah. Who is this that's coming up from the wilderness? That's child of most time. That's Shazia Harun. That's Becky Weaver. That is Michelle Vargo Hutchinson. Who's that? That's Dr. Tadius Carter. Coming from the, coming up. You're not just going out, you're coming up. You're coming up from the wilderness, which means you are in a place of below. You are in a place of being beneath, but God says you'll be the head and not the tail. You'll be above only and not beneath. So much hallelujah. You see, this is how you flow in the spirit. I'm flowing as I worship the Lord. He gives me wisdom, revelation, downloads, and it just flows. It's a beautiful tapestry of the Lord. Hallelujah. And what does the wilderness stand for? It stands for confusion. The orphan spirit. Being a vagabond stands for a curse. Stands for nakedness, poverty, shame. Being lost. You are coming up from the wilderness. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Mata Tarabosa. So I want to pray for you, friends. I believe on this Shabbat Shalom, you are ascending. Amen. If you received the word of the Lord today, say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall. My goodness, what a flow, what a pour. Look at this. I am working on getting his mic set up here. So soon your boy. I've had these for three years. And I, I did not like having this thing in my face. But you know what? It's a new season. Hallelujah. It's a new season. So we need to upgrade. We need to change. We need to go to the next level. But I've had these mics. These are not cheap, y'all. These are the best. We the best. I've had these things for three years. We've had so much equipment. But this truly is a season to build. Do you hear me? My check, my check. Hey, Scotty, beam me up, Scotty. Sha da 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 da. Hallelujah. If you're blessed today, say amen. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. We have many, many, many exciting things that is in the works that God is working in. Once again, in two hours, oh my God, it's an Wow, literally an hour and a half. I got to go home and get ready because I'm supposed to preach and minister here in Fullerton, California. My goodness. So I'm going to be ministering in an hour's time at Fullerton, California. Hallelujah. And then uh, next week, I'll be in Atlantic City, Ocean City, New Jersey for one day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'll be in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Come and see me, East Coasters. The East Coasters love... The West Coast flavor, they're jealous. Eh, maybe, uh, but the East Coasters love your boy from the West Coast, the best coast, the blessed coast. So next week, I will be in the East Coast, and Lord willing, the week right after, I will be there as well. Well, well, Father, I thank you. Bless your people. I declare, let the Esters arise. My goodness, won't he do it? Yes, you will. Let the esters arise. And I declare the favor of God, which is irrevocable, is coming upon your life. So Lord, bless your children today from the top of the head to the soles of their feet. And may you, Allah, ascend, climb up, go up in this season by the spirit of grace and revelation like never before. In the name of Jesus, we pray. All of God's people said, amen. Well, friends, bless you, love you. I just realized I got to go. I got to get ready for tonight's meeting. So give this a share. Give me a follow. Give us a like. Amen. Uh, give us a like. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. And uh, beware, there's a lot of scams, a lot of fake Ben Limbs. I don't know why they're trying to be Ben Lim. I mean, come on, somebody. But there's a lot of scams and a lot of fake pages. In fact, there's probably a new fake page every week these people make. Amen. And the, the Lord curse every lying spirit in Jesus' name. But friends, bless you, love you. I'll see you soon. Shalom. Happy Friday. Shabbat shalom.